Security sweeps of all decks are negative, Mr. Spock. Before Nichelle Nichols broke barriers on board the USS Enterprise as Lieutenant Uhura, she was dancing and singing her way across the stages of New York City and Chicago, the city close to where she grew up, Robbins, Illinois. In 1967, she released a cover of the Joe McCoy classic, Why Don't You Do Right, on Epic Records. Get out of here! But it was playing Star Trek's Lieutenant or Horror where she really found fame. It was a groundbreaking role for an African-American woman in 1966, widely considered one of the first times a woman of color was not portraying a servant on TV. Horror was the chief communications officer and fourth in command on board the Enterprise. I didn't find out that it was fourth in command till the second season. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody told me. Nichols actually thought about leaving after the first season. The show's creator, Gene Roddenberry, begged her to stay. But it was an influential fan that finally convinced her, Martin Luther King. He said, you can't. Oh. D don't you know who you are? Hmm. To our movement, to everyone who's... You are there in the 23rd century. You've created a role that has such dignity and everything. It's powerful. You cannot leave. Another landmark for the show during the turbulent 60s, the first scripted interracial kiss on national television in 1968. We had heard rumors that the southern stations, uh, some southern stations might, might cut it down. It changed television forever, and it also changed um, the way people looked at one another. Um, if they, their fa two of their favorite actors, um, can battle through it and come through it on top. Why can't everybody? The show ended in 1969, but endured for years in syndication and at conventions attended by devoted Trekkies. In 1994, Nichols published her autobiography, Beyond Uhura, Star Trek, and Other Memories. Nichols also starred in several Trek movies and even worked with NASA to increase diversity in the space program. I had the privilege of recruiting the first women and minority astronauts for the space shuttle program. Nichols' enduring beauty, her strength of character, her commitment to human rights will always inspire. And CNN media analyst and former New York Times media reporter Bill Carter joins me now. Bill, there is just an outpouring of remembrance today on social media, just beautiful reflections on her life. Bernice King, Martin Luther King Jr.'s daughter said, representation matters, excellence and representation matters even more. Thank you, hashtag Nichelle Nichols, rest well, ancestor. I love that Martin Luther King Jr. story and how he made her realize how significant she was to black children and young women because of her TV role, saying, you gotta stay in that role, it's so important. But it was not an easy door for her to open, was it? At the time, you know, it was pretty extraordinary. I mean, the, the television had not had a black character anywhere like this. This was before Diane Carroll did her, her show. And that was controversial, they didn't really let her be a, a real character. This was a real, powerful, intelligent, commanding person. Now, they said it in the 23rd century, which was kind of a commentary on what was happening in America at the time. This is the civil rights era. And, you know, they were fighting for the basic rights to, you know, ride a bus and things like that and drink at a water fountain. And the show was basically saying, we're going to show what, what it could be in the future, what it could be for the racial equality in the future. So they found an actress who was so convincing as a person of intelligence and you know, authority that it, they could put, they pulled it off so well. I remember as a kid being in high school and watching the show with friends of mine and nobody reacting at all to the fact that it was a black character. Nobody actually reacting at all. That was extraordinary at the time. And it's a testament to the show for doing it, but especially to the actress for pulling it off. It certainly is. And, you know, another recollection from Whoopi Goldberg, who said Star Trek was the first time she saw a black woman on screen who wasn't playing a maid and that it was so inspiring to her. I mean, the, the, there are so many stories like that. Yes, exactly. I mean, 
you have to remember, this was actually in the mid 60s and you know everything that we think of now and, and there are conflicts now still which is extraordinary but at you know at the time it was everything was charged extremely charged and you had the idea that you would have a character a black character in this kind of role was groundbreaking really truly groundbreaking and yet it was done in a way that i think was brilliant because it's set in the future folks what are you going to say about it how is this you know raising hackles in 1966 when it's not supposed to be in the 23rd century so they managed to do it and star trek was great for that they they explored themes like that because they could because they were dealing with the future but this was really an amazing uh, approach and i have to say she was not an actress anyone knew but boy was she well cast she just utterly was convincing beautiful woman no question but also she just carried authority and that was you know what was essential to the part i want to talk about that famous kiss that kiss between uhura and captain kirk uh, was also groundbreaking certainly not something the mass audience was expecting do you recall the reaction to that at the time you know it was interesting the, there was not a giant reaction to this it later on when star trek became a cult hit in syndication it was talked about enormously this this breakthrough moment at the time again i felt like everyone who was watching the show at that point and it wasn't a big hit at the time already accepted the fact that this is not a contemporary situation so the idea that there would be an interracial kiss did not blow everyone away except that they stopped to think about it and and again they did it in such a very smart way they were concerned about the south the stations in the south would pull television stations for anything they thought was promoting you know racial equality in those days extraordinary as that sounds but they thought we we better film the kiss and then we'll have another you know scene the same scene shot reshot where they don't actually kiss They're, because the, you know the aliens were forcing them to kiss and the two actors according to both of their stories just made it impossible that when they reshot the scenes it they were unusable so they had to show the scene with the kiss and they expected all this blowback which they didn't get the station in the south ran the show and it didn't get the kind of blowback anyone expected because again i felt like they were telling people you know what you may be prejudiced today you may think you hate black people today but you know what that's going to be passé at some point it's going to be you know in the past. everyone's going to get past this Yeah, she had an incredible life. She also volunteered for NASA to recruit minority and female candidates for the space agency. Did, just did so much, and uh, we honor her tonight on this show. Bill Carter, thank you for your remembrance of her incredible life.